After you've installed QuickBooks on your system, you'll see this icon now loaded on your desktop called QuickBooks Pro 2008. I'm going to go ahead and double click this icon and it's going to go ahead and launch QuickBooks. QuickBooks is launched and this brings you to this main menu here that gives you some choices. What we want to do is we're going to create a new company file. If you are upgrading from a previous version of QuickBooks Pro, you could go to open existing file and if you had 2006 or 2007, it would take you through the conversion process. For our exercise today, we're going to be creating a new company file. So we're going to click on that icon. This is the Easy Step Interview Startup screen. And you'll notice that at the very top here, we have the Start Interview button. This will launch the Easy Step Interview. And down here towards the bottom left, we have Convert Data. This is what I was speaking about in our earlier movie, where if you were coming from Quicken or Peachtree or MS Accounting Software, at this point you could click on Convert Data, and this would launch you into a new wizard for converting the data from those programs into QuickBooks. Also, if you're an old pro, very familiar with QuickBooks, don't feel you need to go through the interview process, at this point you could skip the interview, just enter in your company information, and then go right into QuickBooks. For our exercise today, we're going to go ahead and start the interview. Our first screen is enter your company information. If you look here at the top, you'll see this red asterisk. And notice at the bottom here, this tells you what that means. It's a required field. So what QuickBooks is telling you that in this screenshot, the only required information it needs is your company name. However, because we are setting up a brand new company in QuickBooks, we're going to go ahead and fill in all the information that we have pertaining to this company. OK, I'm going to go ahead and type in our company name. The name of our company is Eat Cake Patisserie. If I hit the tab key, you notice that it auto fills in the name in the legal name section. Normally the company name and the legal name would be the same. The exception to this rule is if you're operating under a DBA. A DBA is a doing business as name, meaning that I have a legal name for my entity, however I do business as this name. An example of that would be if my legal name was Suzanne Robertson Incorporated, but I was doing business as Suzanne Robertson, thereby I would have two different names. In this case, our company name and our legal name is the same. So we're going to leave it as such. My federal tax ID number that I need to complete in this field, again, is provided on your tax return form. The number will depend on how your organization is held. Are you incorporated? Are you a sole proprietorship or a limited liability corporation? If you're unsure of the number to populate in this field, you should check with your accountant or CPA. Our company is a corporation, so we're going to go ahead and fill in our federal tax ID number. Into our next field, which is our street address, and we're going to go ahead and complete that right now as well. And we're going to complete the phone number. And for the purpose of this exercise, all of this information that I'm filling in for our company is fictitious. You would complete, of course, all of your actual information for your company. And we're going to enter our email address. At this point, we can go ahead and click on Next. Select your industry allows QuickBooks to know what type of business you're running so it can turn on certain features within the program that will best suit your business needs. You can see there's a long list to choose from. If you cannot find your type of business, simply choose the one that is closest to it. QuickBooks will assign features to that industry and then later on you can choose to turn them off or select other features that you feel may be more appropriate for your business. We are going to select restaurants and catering or bar. And we're going to click on Next. How is your company organized? This is where QuickBooks asks you how is your company organized or held. Are you a corporation, also known as a regular C-Corp? Are you sole proprietorship? Or perhaps a limited liability corp? After selecting the type of business entity you are, QuickBooks will know what type of tax form is best suited for your entity. We're going to go ahead and select a corporation for our business entity. QuickBooks is now asking to select your first month of your fiscal year. And as we've discussed previously, you have to determine what 12 months you want to use for reporting of your financial information. As you can see, QuickBooks defaults to January, as that is the recommended time frame for starting. We're going to go ahead and leave that, but if you notice, there is a drop-down arrow, and if you click in it, it does give you all 12 months of the year for you to choose from. 
So if you had an alternate time frame to start with, you would simply select that month and it would populate in this field. We're going to go ahead and leave it selected for January. QuickBooks allows you to add a password to your system to protect your company file and its contents. Generally, passwords are used in a multi-user environment, but you can use them for a single user as well. In a multi-user environment, not only are you allowed to assign passwords to each user, but you can assign levels of authority or areas of the data they can access based on that password. This comes in handy when you have someone who perhaps is just a bookkeeper for your company, and all you want them to be able to access is your payroll section, but you don't want them to see any other data within the company. Or perhaps you have someone who's just an accounts receivable clerk, and you do not want them to have access to your payroll or accounts payable information. You can assign them a password and that level of authority, and QuickBooks will limit them as far as the data they can see in all other areas of the company. You always have to set one person up as the administrator who has access to all areas of the company. You can also use it in an area where there only is a single user. And by turning on the password feature, you're preventing other people who may have access to your computer to be able to access your file. Passwords are optional. Uh, you do not have to turn them on, but they are a good security feature, and we do recommend at least one person having a password for accessing the company file. For our exercise purposes today, we're going to leave this feature off, but I would strongly recommend, whether you're in a multi-user environment or single user, that for your own company file, you do assign a password. At this point, we're ready to create our company file. We're going to go ahead and click on Next, and QuickBooks is going to take us into our File Save As window. And in here we have our choices of where we're going to locate our company file and what we're going to name it. QuickBooks will default on your system and you can choose to change those defaults if you like. That will be based on your own company business needs. If you notice at the top here you have the save in window and it shows you where it's going to be saving the file. At that time you can choose to save it in another place. We're going to go ahead and leave it in the default. You can see that QuickBooks also has populated our company name as our file name and we're going to go ahead and leave that as such, and it's giving us the default file type, which is how we want to save it. We don't want to change that file type structure. Now we're going to click on Save. We've completed the first half of our Easy Step interview, and in the next movie, we'll be covering how to customize QuickBooks for your business. A membership to lynda.com unlocks this entire course and hundreds of others. Visit lynda.com to learn more.